you're about to discover a mobile home flipping formula that can make you a fortune. Right now is the perfect time to be flipping mobile homes. We are way beyond crisis level when it comes to affordability of homes in America. Many would-be home buyers are simply priced out of the stick-built home market. And their only option to be a homeowner is to buy a manufactured home. But how do you buy, fix, and resell a mobile home so that you can maximize the profits but minimize the risks? Well, that's what I'm going to share with you here in this video. I'm going to share with you what you need to look for and most importantly what you need to avoid so you can stay away from the pitfalls and then what specifically you need to do so that you can increase the value with the least amount of cost so ultimately you can make the biggest profits. If you do this right, this is about as close to printing money as any technique that exists in real estate. Like any great recipe, it all begins with the right ingredients. And for this formula, there are four key requirements that must be in place. Requirement number one, the mobile home title needs to not be retired yet. So mobile homes, like cars or boats, have a title. And when that title is retired, that's when it becomes real property. But prior to that, the mobile home is not able to get a conventional or FHA, VA, which is government-backed mortgage. So therefore, you're looking for deals where the mobile home is not retired because that's your big value play. You're gonna retire the title and that's gonna drastically improve the value. It's gonna open it up for buyers, whether they're getting a conventional loan, VA, FHA loan, and so now all of a sudden, you're able to make the big money. Requirement number two is that the mobile home is situated on its own land. This is critical because you can't retire the title unless the mobile home is on its own parcel of real estate. Now this is very different from mobile homes in a mobile home park. Real quickly, I'm not a huge fan of the model, but the way that works is that you pay cash for the mobile home in the park, you leave it in the park, and then you resell it on owner financing terms with high interest rates. That's similar to owning a used car lot and selling used cars with your own financing. I don't like the fact that the mobile home itself depreciates in value because it's not real estate. And I've always felt like if you're gonna own something long-term, it needs to also be appreciating long-term as well. So instead, I recommend you own the mobile home park itself. That is a much better business model. That does appreciate. I don't have time to share that model. In fact, I recommend a different channel for that subject. Go to Commercial Property Advisors with Peter Harris. He's got some great videos on the subject, and he has a great team that really is dialed in on mobile home park investing. All right, so let's get back to this. The key ingredient number two is going to be that you have a mobile home on its own land. That's going to give you the capacity to retire the title. Requirement number three is that the mobile home itself is built on or after 1976. So even if you fit the first two requirements, you get the title retired. When you go to sell to someone getting a conventional or government-backed loan, one of the underwriting guidelines is that the mobile home was built on or after 1976. And that's because HUD standardized the construction practices of manufactured housing in 1976. So what happens if you run into a deal that fits the first two requirements but doesn't fit this one? Well, I wouldn't close on it if I were you. Instead, flip it, wholesale it before you close. Make it someone else's problem. Someone else can deal with it. Key requirement number four is that the structure has not already been destroyed by either termites or water damage. The reality is manufactured houses use different materials than stick-built homes. It's usually sawdust glued together. And so both termites and water can really wreak havoc with them. Now termites are more of a problem in the southern part of America and that tends to dissipate as an issue the further north you get. And so here in Florida, termites are a real problem. So there are two ways in which I try to identify if there's already a major termite problem, and that saves me the money of having to pay for a termite inspection. The first is I like to walk around, and you can tell I'm wearing cowboy boots, I do that on purpose. 
I'm feeling for any problems in the flooring. Because yes, that could indicate a foundation issue, but usually it indicates that termites have gotten involved. But there's a second part to determining if termites are a major issue. And that's going to be if the exterior walls are weak. And so I will push on the exterior walls. I'll give them a real hard push. I kid you not. I was doing this one time on a property and I almost went all the way through the exterior wall because it was so weak from termite damage. There's somebody living in the house and if that would have happened, if I would have pushed it through, it would have taken the whole roof with it because mobile homes are structured on the outside to support the roof. So if those outside walls are not tough, you are probably got termite damage and that's a huge problem that you don't want to fix. That's a deal killer. That's the situation where you just want to walk away. So what if you're in an area where termites are not a problem? You're not out of the woods yet. You also have to worry about water damage. Water can be a major problem with mobile homes because oftentimes the owners are not replacing the roofs because it's expensive and they're not able to get a mortgage or a HELOC to be able to pay for the roof. Rain is not the only source of water problems that can occur on a mobile home. The other is the plumbing system. So you want to check to make sure that there's no soft spots in the floors anywhere around any plumbing fixtures, whether that be the, of course, shower, tub, the toilet, but also you want to check underneath the sinks as well. Anywhere where there's plumbing, there could be leaks. And again, with mobile homes, because of the inferior construction materials, you've got to be very sensitive to problems that can occur from a water leak. And again, this one here is in great shape, one of the reasons why I bought it. So, if you didn't fall through the floor, and you didn't push a wall over, there's no major roof leaks, there's no major plumbing problems, the termites are kept at bay, then you've satiated requirement number four that neither termites nor water have already ruined the property. So those are the four requirements of this mobile home flipping formula. Number one, the mobile home title is not retired. Number two, it's situated on its own land. Number three, it was built on or after 1976. And number four, that neither water nor termites have already destroyed it. So how do you retire a mobile home title? After all, that's your big power play, right? That's where you're gonna produce all your profits. Well, first, you need the original title of the mobile home. And if the seller has lost it or can't find it, well, then you can order a replacement title. But to do that, you need the VIN number. Where's the VIN number on a mobile home? That can be inside of a cabinet door. It can be inside of a closet. And this particular property, after some searching, we found it in this closet right here. Second, once you have the original title or a replacement title, now you can officially retire the title. Now where is that done? That's done with either the county or the municipality, and that's usually both the property appraiser's office and the recorder's office. Now here in Florida, I use a company aptly named Mobile Home Title Services, and they do the filing with the property appraiser and with the recorder's office for me. Now your state might not be as simple as just some paperwork filings. For example, in Nevada, they require an approval that has an inspector that comes out and looks at several different things, including the foundation, which we'll talk about in a moment. Now, your state might be different. In fact, everyone seems to be slightly different out there, and therefore, you should reach out to your closing attorney or title company and ask them specifically how they have retired titles in the past. When you retire the title from a paperwork perspective, that doesn't automatically assume that you're gonna be able to get your buyer a conventional or government-backed loan. In Florida, in fact, what they require is a foundation certification. They require that the foundation has been structured correctly, so even if you have a retired title, you also have to go to that next level of a foundation, which is where we turn to next. The foundation is a critical component of flipping a mobile home, and this is a part where so many investors have really had problems and they usually only discover the issue after they've closed, they fix it up, they're selling to the new buyer and it's the new buyer's lender that's bringing up problems related to the foundation. 
So HUD actually put out a guideline for foundations for manufactured homes. I've got the link to that in the description. You can learn more. And one of the things you learn on there is wind classes. I'm here in Florida, and the majority of the peninsula is in a class two wind zone. So what that means is in addition to having the right piers and the right setup down below, you also have to add straps. And we call them straps, but they're also called tie downs that wrap around the metal and anchor to the ground. And that's a cost of two to $3,000 more when you're doing a mobile home flip in Florida. And that also has to be permitted, but that's gonna help with the process of getting approved for that conventional or government backed loan. And so this is what I suggest you do. What VA and FHA is gonna require the buyer to do is to get a foundation certification letter. So my suggestion is before you close, go get it yourself. Go see what the problems are. Get that inspection from that company. An example here in Florida would be Martin and Martin. I'll give you a link again in the description to that. And uh, they provide foundation inspections just for manufactured houses. It's just like, if you will, a, a home inspection or an appraisal. It's one more additional item. And this helps you understand what you're getting yourself into. Because remember, the end game is that the new buyer is getting a conventional or government backed loan. And the foundation is a key component of that. Now very briefly, I'm gonna share with you how to renovate a mobile home when you're flipping. I call it matching the hatch. That's a phrase that comes from fly fishing when you match the right fly to what insect is hatching on the river that day. That's opposed to the phrase putting lipstick on a pig. I don't do that and I don't recommend you do that either because that assumes that you're covering up a problem which is not what's being done when you're matching the hatch. Let me give you some examples here in the kitchen. The best example is rather than using real tile back here, we're gonna do the stick-on tile. It's only about $3 a square foot versus the almost nine to $10 a square foot for the materials plus the labor to put the real tile in. Another example here in the kitchen is the countertops. Now, first of all, it's curved, which already makes it more difficult to simply buy new countertops off the shelf in Home Depot. The other thing is these are in good shape. There's no bubbles, there's no welts, there's no problems here. So rather than replacing the countertops, we're gonna paint them. There are kits where you can paint laminate countertops. I understand it's not as nice as replacing, but that's what matching the hatch is all about. Another example is we're gonna paint these cabinets. We're not gonna replace them. In fact, we're gonna paint the whole house. And as I see right here, we're also going to cut this out so we can put in a standalone oven. And that is going to replace this antique relic right here, which needs to probably be in an antique shop. So that's matching the hatch. It's matching the quality of construction of the structure and of the neighborhood with your renovation. It's not putting lipstick on a pig. Still debating whether or not to take out these saloon doors. I guess I have to ask myself this question. Do I feel lucky? So if you want to discover how to find great deals like this, how to negotiate with the seller, how to make sure your offer is the right amount so you have plenty of margin for safety and you don't pay too much, if you want to know how to get access to funding for deals like this, because most hard money lenders won't lend on mobile home conversions because it's land and a mobile home that hadn't become real property yet, you typically have to pay cash, consider applying to my apprentice program where my mentoring team and I will work with you on all kinds of deals, including these, and we'll turn you into a first-class market-leading real estate investor. And also, if you have any questions or concerns about this video, put them down in the comments down below here. I'll carve out time out of my schedule. My name's Phil Pustiowski, by the way, with freedommentor.com. Also, don't forget in the description, I have a link to some of these additional resources that are gonna help you with this formula. Well, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video.